ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. What would you say if I told you there's a book that can teach you how to win The Bachelor? What would you say if I told you producers caught multiple finalists reading that book in this season that's currently airing? What would you say if I told you the producers don't want anyone to know that their show has been compromised? How do we know all this? We wrote that book. I'm Lizzie Pace. And I'm Chad Colchin. We're the authors of How to Win the Bachelor and the hosts of the Game of Roses podcast, a bi-weekly podcast where we break down all the biggest plays, errors, and MVPs in the game of reality television. Listen to Game of Roses wherever you get your podcasts and go to howtowinthebachelor.com to get our book. Acast helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. Acast.com. Hi, Dave here, and this is my wife, Kathy. Hello. And this is the Cinemile. It's the podcast where we walk home from the movies, and we're back from pod Turnity leave for our first cinema trip as a unit of four. Yes. And we're all here. The whole family's here. Yeah, we decided to make it official. We're going to see Onward, uh, which seems like a perfect movie to go see on a rainy Saturday morning with two young children. Yes. One of whom will not know what's happening, one of whom's very excited. Yes, yeah, so we have, uh, if you're first listening to us we have a two and a half year old and a one month old um so interest this will be an interesting trip i think to <laughs> yeah, see uh, if we make it through the because oscar has been to um the cinema before to see paw patrol which we did an episode on a few weeks ago but that was 45 minutes long this movie is an hour and 50 minutes long yeah. i'm not sure we'll even get to the end the of the key this, difference yeah. here is that this is an actual movie and paw patrol was a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's speak speak about Paw Patrol Ready Race Rescue. But I'm excited for this movie because like it's the first movie Pixar have done in a while that isn't a sequel, right? Um, yes, I think so. Um, I don't know a lot about this, to be honest. I, I tried to uh, avoid all the stuff about it to be surprised because I'm a big fan of Pixar in general. I loosely know the plot, but I'm not going to say anything to you. And I know that everyone's raving about it, which is giving me... Hopefully not too high Strong hopes. Strong vibes. Very high hopes. Oh yeah, Toy Story 4 is the last Pixar movie I saw, which was a pleasant surprise actually. It was, but it's also the yeah. fourth installment, which just makes something naturally a bit tedious. Yeah, I true. I mean, yeah. I'm hoping for this sort of a return to the glory days of Pixar, which uh, for me, the golden era was that hot streak of uh, Wally up and... Um, What's the other one? Wow, that must have been really hot. You remember the third one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember it. There was another one. Anyway, those two. Oh, Inside Out. Inside Out. Yeah, 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 yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, let's hope so. Now, Oscar, are you excited for the cinema? Yeah. What are we going to see? Do you remember what we're going to see? Put on you. You put, you're putting the dinosaur on the microphone. Yes, I can see and that. And what are we going to see in the cinema? I'm going to ask for the dinosaur. Yes, you are. Well, the dinosaur okay. is coming to the cinema. Right. Well, I, we don't even need to go to the cinema. We could just play with this microphone yeah. for an hour and a half. I think it would be probably more interesting. Okay. Are you excited to go to the cinema, Oscar? It's, it's a head. It does look like a head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enough on that. Um, such a natural. All right. Let's, uh, let's do this. We'll see you... Um, hopefully. We'll hopefully after two hours. Yeah. Perhaps after 45 minutes <laughs> to an hour. In which case we'll chat about what we saw up to that point. Okay. Bye. In times of old, the world was full of wonder and magic. But times change. Morning, Mom. Hey, birthday boy. By the laws of yore, I must dub thee a man today. Kneel before me. That's okay. I have a gift from your dad. He just said to give you this when you were both over 16. <gasps> no way! It's a wizard staff. Dad was a wizard. What? Your dad was an accountant. This spell brings him back. For one whole day, Dad will be back. What? Back? Like back to life? That's not possible. It is with this. I'm gonna meet Dad. Right, we're out. We've just seen Onward. Uh, Three of us saw it. One of us slept through most of it. And Uh, we've uh, walked out into Storm Jorge. Yeah, it's so (laughs) weird. We had intended to walk home with this big double buggy we have. Um... But uh, Storm Jorge has other plans, so we are huddled under a bus shelter waiting for a bus right now. Uh, so we may have to get on a bus in the middle of this. But hey, um, Oscar is falling asleep there, so we're going to um, leave him alone. Uh, but he, he, I think he really liked it. Yeah, he it. loved it. He was engrossed. Uh, sat, sat there for the whole thing. Um, 
only complained once, uh, and that was because he wanted a snack. Yeah, fair enough. Been uh, there. He's now obsessed with dragons. Yeah. Uh, the we... dragon was cool in it, to be fair. Now, Kathy, I get the vibe you're not really into this movie. I didn't really enjoy it. Um, it wasn't. No, first of all, I was. I have to say, stressed being in the cinema with two kids for the first time. We did really well. well. We did we really well. We made it through the whole we thing. We made it. And, uh, they, and so did they. Look, I was vomited on a couple of times, but let, we let my <laughs> look, be my I, I can't apologise enough, all right? <laughs> I had too much popcorn. Um, but no, so I, th- I think my expectations were very high. Um, and I actually think fundamentally my lack of enjoyment stems from... Your stress? Visually, I find it a very unattractive movie. And I had never seen a trailer or a poster, so I didn't know what it looked like. So I was like, oh, is this it? Like, to me, it looked like some sort of, like, naughty's DreamWorks level animation is what I'd call this. It wasn't attractive or exciting or interesting. Yeah, okay, I can Um, see that. So, yeah, it kind of felt like Shrek the Three kind of vibe. That's what I was getting off it. beautiful, necessarily. No. Should we say very briefly what it's about? Because we didn't really know. Um, So it's called Onward. It's uh, the sort of setup is... uh, Imagine Lord of the Rings, a fantasy, classic uh, fantasy Dungeons and Dragons style world that has uh, progressed um, hundreds of years. Technology is introduced to the point where they basically now live with iPhones uh, and computers and big buildings and police cars and all the modern day trimmings we have. So essentially, imagine the movie uh, Bright starring Will Smith. Yes! Uh, except- I knew it was reminding me of something. <laughs> except actually good. <laughs> Bright is another movie we have reviewed on this podcast. Yes, you can scroll back and find that um, our, our thoughts on that. Anyway, that's pile the setup. Nonsense. But picture the animation is like Shrek the Third. A, a little bit like Zootropolis. If Zootropolis, um, Zootropolis plus fantasy and magic, basically. Yeah, um, and basically, it's these two boys, teenager and a young adult, who are I, given I the opportunity. A, I think it's a grown, a grown man and a, and a and teenager. teenager. I would They're say. given the opportunity to spend. A day with their father who passed away like 16 years ago. Yeah. Through magic. So that's kind of the setup, which I love. Like, I love the notion of it. But yeah, I think I was a little bit just disappointed by how it looked. And then I have to say, like, none of the gags landed for me. I didn't. I, basically, kind of from an overall perspective, I didn't think it was very funny or fun. And, and they were trying to land a lot of gags and there's lots of different creatures and for me the creature design didn't work on anything except the dragon which was awesome as Oscar pointed out the dragon was really cool but I, I don't know I just found it all quite dull now the central plot of two boys who've lost their father obviously got me I thought that was beautiful and I thought that, that stuff was executed really well but everything else in it there's like a big quest I found not interesting there was lots of subplots I found uninteresting so I know you were laughing but I didn't laugh at any of the gags so that's kind of my overall I don't I feel like we saw different movies I loved this thing to bits I absolutely adored it I was crying like 10 minutes in oh I cried too um, yeah but they cried they manipulated us with a couple of bits where like we both looked at each other and I knew you'd be crying at the same bit I was crying at yeah but look but these are but these are that's why Pixar make good movies when they're hitting it out of the park is because they drill story down to universal truths uh, and no matter where you are or your situation or who you are you can identify with the plight of these characters because we all um, we all have parents and, and a lot of us have siblings um, and a lot of us were awkward teens so it was interesting for me I was able to put myself in the position of the teenager the um, the older brother and the father a father of two sons um, and somebody who, who's, who personally, my dad is very ill. So I, I, so much of this movie resonated with me on a personal level, and that's just down to my own circumstances. But and that's the there, central story with the two boys and the dad was a lovely central story. Yeah, and they lost their father through illness. And sitting there in the cinema with, with our two sons next to us. Um, Ex- or vomiting on us. Watch- <laughs> Watching this. It was it was a little like when we brought Oscar when he was a baby to Coco, um, which was also all about family. And I just remember holding him in my arms while I cried at that as well. <laughs> so I just like, yes, you, so to your point, these are these are easy um, strings that uh, Pixar is pulling on, emotional sort of chords, so to speak. But, but, the, but the, they're, that's why they make mass entertainment that is that feels human and relatable while also being 
inventive and imaginative and gorgeous and funny. For me, this is it's a this has this movie has everything. I wasn't well, the, disappointed by a, a, a shred of it. The guy who it, made it, it, it I read it. The reason I knew a little bit about the movie is purely because I read an interview with the guy who made it on The Guardian. And him and his brother did lose their dad at a young age. And all he had of his dad, or they found a tape of his dad where he just said hello and goodbye. Which is very similar to um, what they have of the dad in this movie. Very few memories of their dad. So that felt true in the movie. It felt like it came from a place of experience. And it, that stuff really did resonate. But when you just said there as well that you thought it was innovative and beautiful. I, I thought the plot was pretty paint by numbers. There's oh, some clever bits, but... A lot of Come the quest on. stuff was pretty dull. All right, let's get when we get to spoiler, we'll street, to spoiler street. I want to prove you wrong. I think we need to go to spoiler bus stop right now because once the bus gets here, I ain't. I don't see oh, we how can't we really can talk get a double on buggy onto a bus in the rain whilst doing a podcast. Fine. When the bus arrives, we'll do a little yeah. pause. <laughs> um, all right, spoilers now for the movie onward. Um, Okay, come on. In, what is more ingenious than one of the main characters in this movie being a pair of legs? <laughs> That's, I didn't like when, that. That, when that happened, I was like, what the hell? See, I They're, thought that was funny, but then I just felt bored of it by the end. Like, I wanted to see the dad. No, like, it was I like, gushed, we never saw the dad. No, I disagree. That was an, a beautiful choice. That's like lost in translation level. By taking away that moment, you make it more powerful. If we'd heard what the dad had said, it, w- it would have been less impactful. No, I didn't care about hearing what the dad said. I just wanted our protagonist to meet his dad. No, but that was so... But it, it, it fit in with the journey he went on. But why that, couldn't he have realised all that nice stuff about his brother and met his dad? Because... Like, why? Because... It just felt like a, like a film where they're deliberately throwing obstacles at the lead character just to create conflict. But I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're describing storytelling. Yeah, but usually That's at the end... That's screenplay 101. You put challenges in front of your character. <laughs> yeah, and the challenge that they had was, <laughs> sh- sh- our screaming. dad is about to arrive. We've got two minutes left. And I and and he, he made a sacrifice. He made a personal sacrifice for his brother, who he... Throughout this whole I movie... I know the brother never got to say goodbye the to the dad. The brother never got I get to say it. goodbye. And the whole movie, the, our le- main character, Ian... And I love that he's just called Ian. <laughs> it's so Irish. Name. It's like... Um, the main character, Ian, he's on... Sorry it, to any listeners called Ian, by the way. Sorry, no, Dave is a more boring name than Ian. <laughs> um, but it's just funny to give this... It, 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 that's a deliberate choice to, to have elves and fantasy and magic and they talk about what your wizard name would be and his name is Ian. Yeah. Come on, it's perfect. Um, he's faced... Th- this whole movie is his quest and the movie puts you in Ian's shoes and you're, he's your protagonist and the brother is this sort of goofy inconvenience th- which you see through Ian's eyes and this whole thing is about it goes you, gives you Ian's relationship with his father this is Ian's moment with his father he never got to meet and you realise with Ian towards the end that this isn't just his journey and th- there's a beautiful moment where the older brother I think it was Barley was his name says I, w- I want to see him too you know and it's the real sort of it's the first moment of emotion he's so Ian makes a huge, huge personal sacrifice to, to s- sacrifice the thing he's wanted his whole life and for this whole movie to allow his brother to have that. No, I get all of that. I just think that's beautiful. That's you want to take that away just so they can both have a I hug with their dad. I just think they could have both met him. Like, yeah, but fine. That would f- that would be probably that's probably what we want to see yeah. as an audience. But sometimes what sometimes you can't always get what you want. But if you find sometimes. You might just find you get what you need. This is the second time you've said that to me today. <laughs> it was in my head. <laughs> but the like, first time, are you expecting a reaction time, either time? The first time was in relation to you not getting butter <laughs> <laughs> at breakfast. Uh, um, I'm going to make that wrong. What did you make of all the? Stick. Look, don't get me wrong. Like like, I was bawling, crying at the end of the movie. Right? Of course, it got me emotionally. But what did you like? Did you find the quest interesting? Like, yes. Because I have a Dungeons and Dragons book next to my bed <laughs> that I bought the starter set. I'm obsessed with. Can I tell our listeners the saddest thing? What? Dave wants to play Dungeons and Dragons, but I don't want to play with I him. Don't have time. So he reads. Don't have time or don't have anyone to play with. Oh, I don't have he, anyone to he play He reads with. the instructions like nightly, <laughs> but he's Stop. never played it. Stop it! It's even worse when I hear it out loud. Uh, I've always wanted look, to I'll play, play it Dungeons on your and Dragons. I'll play I mean, it on your fourth year. Thanks. Um, which is four years from now but anyway that'll probably be the time I've learned the rules but did you think like did you really think it was interesting when they were in the garage and those fairies were flying around and like Ah, like, that was shit scene that's a side that's a side but that was like you're talking about a Pixar movie like no that stuff was shit I won't have you say a word about this screenplay because at the end he looks at his list 
and ticks off all the things as he has this moment of self-realization that, yeah, that he was did complete all those things and his brother was there throughout and that got me hard and yeah but he didn't do them with his dad like no, but that, that's not that's, that's not the point he realized he had a father figure the whole time yeah but having and a father figure is different from having your father his father was a <laughs> pair of legs Kathy. <laughs> Now, sorry, that's why you have to have the side quest. The fairy thing was just so that they could have the driving lesson and have an action. Yeah, but scene. they could have done a better one than that. Do you know, that's oh, what I'm, trying I'm to sorry, say. this didn't meet Dave, your you high standards. You mentioned Wally in the intro to this. Like, this movie's not a patch on Wally. I'm okay. Fine, Wally. It's not. Wally is something altogether transcendent, which only seems to get better with time. Yeah, I'm not. I don't want. I don't want to sit here and. Do, you mean stand do, here in this bus stop? I don't want to stand here in this <laughs> bus stop as the rain pours down outside and say, give you a, a BuzzFeed headline of all twenty six Pixar movies ranked from last to worst. I, I I'm not here to do that. I'm here to talk about this. No movie, one asked you to do that. Which I'm telling you, you well, you're the one. You, you're you the one who is. It's no Wally. You mentioned Wally in the intro. You, that's why I'm saying it. Yeah, because I wanted this to be okay, what Pixar about back on form, and this is Pixar back on form. We, I, we did forget to. Mention Coco in the intro, which what is about the, genuinely um, beautiful. What about the animation compared to what I thought of? I'm no, I'm with you. It's certainly you're you're right. It's kind of bang on the money. If you were to if you were to if you were to nail the aesthetic of this, it could easily slot into the DreamWorks early uh, late noughties, early 2000s Shark Tale sort of era. Yeah, um, it's really it's quite ugly. A little bit Shrekish, perhaps in places. But that's not to say. I mean, the to the people who did all the visual effects. I know work they're all listening. Incred- no, but come on, you need to acknowledge people for their work. Oh, I'm it's not saying in- their work's it's bad. It's an incredible achievement. And it's looks, a choice. It, it's a very fleshed out and interesting world. I love this sort of like Zootropolis. I like that they thought through um, how this world would work. It's not as how- good as Zootropolis either, though. No, it, it's not as good as Zootropolis in terms of how they imagine how you know in Zootropolis you see how a mice city could live next to a next to a polar bear look there might be some kids listening to this podcast so I'm going to phrase this one delicately but um, the mom's an elf and the stepdad's a centaur how does that work okay I see what you're getting at (laughs) I would say the answer is carefully (laughs) mount up (laughs) so yeah the cross species stuff was quite interesting I'd say he's like a stallion do you reckon that we, we never got to see the dad as he came back to life because no, but he was in the perfect. distance? I, that's not my point. Sorry. So we never really got to see him, but then we got to see photos of him and pretty good looking, the dad. I reckon he looked like what you, what's your point? John Krasinski. He looked like John sorry, Krasinski. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> the dad looked like, guy's an like John guys Krasinski. Like, I, don't know, I don't know about the, the effects of this movie. <laughs> that dad is pretty hot. Pretty hot. A very sexy dad look at, elf. Look at him again now that you're thinking of John Krasinski and it's just if John Krasinski was a blue DreamWorks elf from the noughties. Okay, well, thanks for <laughs> casting the dad. <laughs> what are you talking about? Look, hey, it's I had to leave the movie for 15 minutes it to raining. change a baby's re- entire outfit. I reckon we walk and make this a real-life cinema. Okay, well, we're nearly cinema. done now. Yeah. Anyway, look, I'm confessing I missed 15 minutes of the movie for um, various reasons. Yeah, but I don't think that would... Oh, hang on. He's going to wake up. <laughs> something, pull that down. <laughs> something really funny happened. <laughs> Actually, I won't. Pull it, hang on. Uh, hold the buggy. Sorry. sorry. Um, okay. I went to change right. Elliot's nappy. Elliot's four weeks old. And realised they only had Oscar's nappies. So <laughs> it's now wearing a nappy that's just like two and a half year old. Yeah, but I'm it sorry. Literally, it literally goes up to his nipples. That's all I have to say on the nappy. Now, enough nappy talk. The worst thing about this is you told me this morning that the nappy bag was stocked up and <laughs> gave out to me for bringing the extra <laughs> nappy bag, which I had put in for the express purposes of, I'm not sure the nappy bag is stocked up. <laughs> to which I was uh, hit with, uh, of course I've stocked it up. You think I'm not going to bring nappies for a child? Yeah, it turns out I'd so, stocked it up for Oscar. So I'm sorry, karma... And I'm has, sorry, Elliot. Has arrived at your doorstep. <laughs> Elliot's basically asleep, like wrapped They're in both plastic asleep. from head to toe. This is, I'm sorry, we are just nailing parenting today. Well, we brought yeah. two children to a cinema who sat there We're, quietly, brackets, vomiting um, <laughs> A little bit. We will be paid back for this later. I have no idea. And now they're both asleep, it. and now we're recording a podcast? Yeah, we Mul- will be paid multitasking. back. Multitasking. It is good multitasking. Okay, I have a few things extra to say about this movie. Um, it's a bit weird that they wrote the older brother as Jack Black and then didn't get Jack Black. It really annoyed me that Chris Pat voiced him. I think, I think that character was Jack Black. 
I guess I, think, Jack, I guess Jack Black is a fifty year old man, so perhaps. But like he, at he most, can. he was supposed to be like nineteen, and I just thought, why do you have like a forty year old man voicing him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought it was a bit lame that Tom Holland voiced the I, other guy as well. Like it was lazy casting. I, I mean, you literally have two. Oh, there's the bus with that we should have got on. It's true, they yeah, but they always they always go for some star power with this. But actually, but Pixar they often. Two Avengers, like, could you have any more boring casting? Yeah, look, I found them. T- I I thought they both gave in fine performances. I forgot it was them, and I bought into these characters I wholesale know, yeah. I loved I just loved everything I loved I loved the way Ian um, learns magic um, I loved all the sort of Dungeons and Dragons I loved the, I loved the passion of the older brother which I think Chris Pratt did sell I like obviously he's a good actor like he did a good job um, he, t- he sells that like just like he does in the Lego movie he, he's basically he's, by his character in Parks and Rec yeah, a little he bit. Kind of look like him. He, he, he. What Chris Pratt brings to this role and the Lego Movie is that just infectious optimism and enthusiasm, which I personally loved. I really liked. Um, there was one bit I really liked that really worked for me. There was a scene where they're like pulled over, and the dad who's like just legs, and they've kind of put a stuffing on top of him, <laughs> so he kind of looks like a man. The police think drunk. he's drunk. It's so funny. Um, and I had read that this this movie has the first. <laughs> gay character in a, in a Pixar movie and it was that cop because she said my girlfriend yeah. um, so that was something I had read I don't know if I'd have actually noticed it was it a nice touch I think um, we have to go back that but way that, I really en- no around. it's fine we can go this no, way you can't cross there oh you oh, can okay sorry um, but I really enjoyed that whole scene like I thought that was a good scene where the, he has to learn a spell uh, to change his appearance and he makes himself look like the Seth dad centaur but, uh, like, and, uh, that was really good and then also quite profound because for whatever reason, when he was in a disguise, he was only allowed to um, tell the truth. And so when he was asked about what he thought about his brother, if his brother was like a, a dropout up. or a screw up, it, it transpired that he did think that and the brother found out. And I thought that was a really good scene. That was a be- and I wish there'd a, a, been more scenes like that. Exactly. I think that's a good example of um, storytelling where they had a fun scenario that's part of their quest and a challenge they have to overcome that also informs their character journeys exactly that was and good and creates character conflict where's I just this think, scene oh oh careful Ew. okay here here oh, we're in oh we're stuck in mud <laughs> Dave, shh. sorry oh it's ruined okay <laughs> now, this is what happens when <laughs> you drive <laughs> Our is will disaster. you get over on the other side of me the worst podcast this is, I can't done. you hold this, this you hold the, the microphone podcast. and I'm driving we really <laughs> sorry we sorry, really should everyone. be walking and it's, it's so muddy uh, apologies are, to my two children who double, I nearly just killed double buggies are heavy yeah um, so yeah that was an example of like a really good scene where the magic worked for me the characters worked for me it was really fun whereas like all the scene in the restaurant I couldn't be dealing with the scene in the garage ah, with but the that fireflies was a funny gag. as I mentioned I couldn't be dealing with um, my favourite scene was the dragon one purely because Oscar was getting so much joy from it. He was like, Mommy, Mommy, it's a dragon, it's a dragon, it's a dragon. My, and the best thing about that was um, during after the dragon fight, which Oscar absolutely loved, and the, uh, the big emotional moment is happening. Uh, the father has arrived and Ian sees him talking to his brother in the distance. And I'm just welling up, and the two of us are watching this. And then Oscar loudly asks, "Daddy, where's the dragon gone?" <laughs> That's all he cared about. We're like Shh, wiping our tears away. <laughs> One other thing I, I, I thought was interesting: th- this whole, the whole setup of this, um, you know, fa- what happens when a fantasy world uh, progresses thousands of years later, which Bright did nothing with. I liked that. I like that's a sort of theme that they sort of touch upon is the cost of technology do you know and the cost of of progress so what do you lose with convenience you know so that's the whole idea like magic was a, a little bit tricky to do and then hey you can just turn on a light switch I like that but what do you lose in the process like you become a little uh, yes yeah, something's easier but, but you've lost the sort you've lo- li- literally lost the magic there's, there's something interesting there in terms of like tradition versus modernism yeah um, which isn't really what the film is interested in or about, but it, it is present throughout. And I like the idea that it's kind of scoffed scoffed at in the beginning. Um, and I then, love at the end when the stepdad lets his hair down and he goes running through the wind. <laughs> that was a good gag. Like, it was, was funny. A, but it's like, yeah, lots of good gags and some nice ideas, but I don't know. I'm, 
I'm, I'm disappointed I didn't enjoy it more and what I'm really disappointed by as well is that there was no proper short at the start now Dave missed it because he was dealing with another nappy emergency but um, was it The Simpsons? I caught the, the end Simpsons. of it The Simpsons so it said like oh welcome to Disney The Simpsons because obviously Disney have bought Fox now um, and I was like right and then it was just like a short film but like in the exact style of The Simpsons visually you know because usually the, Dis- the Pixar shorts is like an opportunity for something new and it was just like oh fine Maggie gets a boyfriend like has a bit of an adventure normally Maggie's not a central character fine it was so I, I was so disappointed because to me the Pixar short movies are like um oh my god now there's a okay tree, a I can't, tree. I'm actually going to take a photo of what's a happening right now Sto- the there storm the storm has blown a tree into the middle of the cinema mile and I don't know how we're going to cross have to the turn road back. now we're, we're going to have to go back, back and, and get, get the bus, bus again Oh, for F's sake. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to our Twitter <laughs> at the cinema aisle to see this obstacle that is facing us. This is like a quest. We're facing our own quest to get home. We're facing the worst quest of all time, right? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, because we're I, on the side of a, like, a dual carriageway, so we can't just like cross the road. So I know, Yeah, so The Simpsons, I think that in theory that's quite <laughs> an interesting idea, I guess, to have... Was it made by Pixar or what? Or... Was it just made by the people who make The Simpsons? Ah, I'm sliding in the mud. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know who made it, but it looked exactly like The Simpsons. Like, there was nothing about it that looked any different. But, um, okay. There was a couple of good visual gags of, like, Maggie, but, like, who cares? Like, I could care less. So I was really disappointed because, for me, the most exciting bit of a Pixar movie usually is that. Like, I can't remember what the last movie we saw... Well, it's a cinema, but remember that lovely one, Bow? Oh, Bow is beautiful. Yeah, I think that yeah. might have been before Coco... So there's often like really beautiful movies and like we own up until the naughties we had DVD of like all the Pixar shorts and we used to watch them all the time. So I thought that was like truly horrifying now to have The Simpsons beforehand because The Simpsons is just creatively bankrupt. Well, it, you know, yeah, it's an interesting um, comparison point because ba- if Bao is the last one we're going to look at, that's a um, a sort of an un- underrepresented culture uh, and familial idea of the empty nester uh, represented in a, the most beautiful and poignant yeah, it was way stunning. and this is compared to Maggie goes <laughs> to the park with Homer <laughs> the, the Simpsons is and Homer eats bankrupt. like a you taco right. so that that is a little depressing that Disney have gone that route but then I guess when you own every asset in the world you need to make the most of them don't you but I Can't think they just want to re- they just want to be like to people hey remember the Simpsons I wish like they why don't they give Pixar a Star Wars movie that like do something interesting with your property. Start crossing things over a bit. I think, there's enough, make... I think there's enough being done with the Star Wars franchise. I don't think anyone else needs to do anything. I'm just trying to think of they've something more interesting Disney than what we're currently Dis- getting. They've got Star Wars on Disney XD. They've got The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. They've got all the Star Wars movies in the cinema. Yeah, like, right. we're grand. We don't need Pixar to make Will Star Wars. we cross Wars. here? Um, yeah, we'll Sorry, cross we're kind of lost, everyone. Okay. I, I, I wonder, should we just uh, let this, po- let this podcast up. episode die? <laughs> <laughs> I think we we've been gone for a month, and this is what you waited just for. Call this quest is a disaster. Okay, quick! Uh, wait, 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 wait! Um, okay. Just don't, don't, don't rush across this main road <laughs> with two children while recording a podcast. Let's wrap this up, and then we'll do um, that, right? So, guys, this is what you've all been waiting for. Thanks for sticking around while we were gone. Yeah, Thank sorry, you everyone is... who sent us so many. No- we got like. At least a hundred amazing messages from people congratulating us on having Oh yes, this, so thank you everyone. Really appreciate you. all the well wishes. Um, we're really happy. We love our family. Um, um, so next time, let's go without the kids because I do fancy a proper cinema trip. That isn't me being stressed or vomiting. Yeah? <laughs> okay, I liked it though. I mean, it was lovely, but yeah, I'm done with that now. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks everyone for listening. Thanks everyone for listening. And if you haven't had a chance yet, we would love if you could head over to Apple Podcasts and subscribe and rate us and leave a five star review that's all we ask if you listen to this podcast and enjoy it that you head over there and rate us you don't even have to write anything you can just click stars Um, okay thank you and don't forget you can follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at The Cinemile wherever you like or email us thecinemile at gmail.com let us know what you thought of uh, Onward Upward Onward and Upward It's kind of a rubbish title as well isn't it That'll be the sequel Yeah it will be Upward Oh no No it'll be The sequel will be up Up it'll be up Crossed over with this Yeah Upward Yeah it'll be amazing Right there you go There's just like
We only have 24 hours to bring the rest of him back. We're going on a quest. Ta-da! That's great. Let us ride. Acast powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. Hey, I'm Kim Holderness. And I'm Ben Holderness. We host the Holderness Family Podcast every Tuesday. You may know us from the silly videos that we make online. Or a book about marriage called Everybody Fights. Or as winners of season 33 of The Amazing Race. Still can't believe that happened. Listen, we do a lot of stuff, but our podcast is our most favorite thing. Yeah, because every week we get to sit down face to face, talk to each other about marriage, family, mental health, or just anything that we want to know more about. Sometimes we have expert interviews, sometimes it's just us, but our goal is to bring some joy and laughter into your life every week. Our other goal is that maybe you will learn something as well. Right. So search the Holderness Family Podcast and check out our most recent episodes. We have one about staying organized with creators of the Home Edit. And one about being diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. We hope you'll join us. Acast helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. Acast.com.